welcome back and thanks for watching all my videos. I really appreciate it. One of my passions in life is flying and anything to do with aviation. You've probably seen my films on the 737 MAX 8 series. There's one enormous issue in the aviation industry and that's bird stripes. They're more common than you imagine, but luckily less common in doing fatal damage. The one exception is the double ingested engine bird strike that classically happened in the Miracle on the Hudson crash and brilliantly saved by Sully and Skiles. Us pilots are trained for bird strikes and they can occur at any time and are always shocking. The amount of damage due to the collision speed of both the bird and the airplane can wreak havoc on airframe parts, but it's especially bad when a bird is ingested into an engine. But that eventuality is planned for, and aircraft engines have to pass a bird strike test, mainly to contain the rotating parts in the outer cowling, so bits of a red hot engine don't go flying through the cabin. But what a bird strike does to the internal workings of a jet engine is devastating. As the bird is ingested, it's chopped up by the rotating turbine blades and then chucked out the back. This causes what's known as a compressor stall. It's a bit like a car backfiring and often flames come out of the back of the engine and the engine stops. Other times the engine will continue to operate if the bird is small and nothing has been put severely out of balance, but it is a major incident for a flight crew. But there might be a solution to bird strikes. And let's just talk a bit about birds and airports. Airports are large expanses, often with lots of grass, and traditionally birds love airports for nesting and just hanging out. But the solutions tried to get rid of birds from airports have so far not really worked. There's bird scarers and dogs and just driving around, but what you really need to do is to teach generation after generation of birds that the airport is not a smart place to land. My old airport in Wisconsin had a policy of killing the Canadian geese and the other birds in an area around the airport. And that just is horrible and doesn't work because the next generation try and come back there and they haven't learned their lesson. But a new company based in Canada have come up with Robobird. Robobird is a drone of a flapping peregrine falcon, one of the best known species that hunt other birds. Birds are truly terrified of them. So in an experiment at Halifax Airport in Canada, they've been testing the robot drone bird and it seems to be working really well. Here's a short film about Robobird and how it's humanely scaring the birds and hopefully solving the menace of the bird strike. The truth is up there. I'm driving around looking to see where potentially there could be issues with birds. If it's rained, looking to see if there are birds that have come closer to the runway, potentially looking for earthworms or something like that. Our airport is massive. It's over 7,000 acres. There's a variety of habitats that could be attractive to birds. Birds and aircraft just don't mix. So we want to prevent birds from coming to the airport in the first place. I've had them go off the windshield of the aircraft. I've had them go off the wings of the aircraft, off the fuselage of the aircraft. It's usually a non-event. But the worst case scenario is if you ingested large birds through both engines, as what happened with the US Airways on the Hudson River. Universal praise tonight for the US Airways pilot who pulled off a flawless landing in the icy Hudson River. Something like weather, we can usually avoid, but birds, Birds are, I'd say, chaotic.
I'm sure everyone has seen a picture or two of a crow sitting on the scarecrow. After a while, once they realize it's not a true predator, is no longer effective. But if birds know that there's a predator chasing them, they start to leave the area and they don't come back to that same area. The roebird is a robotic falcon. So it is a flapping wing drone, but what it does is it actually looks like a peregrine falcon. It flaps its wings just like a real bird would and that is its form of propulsion. So literally a robotic bird. There's a lot of techniques that are used for dealing with birds at airports. Everything from loud explosive pops or you're using what they call screamers. Dogs have been used to scare birds up off the ground. So there's a really large toolbox of techniques and each species responds differently. The difference with the roe bird is you're tying into their natural instincts to get away from predators. Peregrine falcon spans the globe and is the most well-known falcon in the world. Because of that, birds all over the world also recognize it as a predator, and so they're more likely to respond the way it would to a natural predator. You actually have to think like a predator. You have to think like a falcon because you're hunting birds. We're not doing anything more than chasing them, but birds are erratic. You have to be more erratic, attacking them, getting into the middle of a flock. That behavior is what really, really starts to startle them because you're acting just like their predators would. The pilot is focusing on flying and attacking. The observer really supports them in understanding where the birds are, which direction they need to head, keeping an eye on airspace. The goal is to keep birds out of harm's way. So generationally, even if the next generation comes through, they go, well, I don't know why I don't go there, but my parents didn't and my grandparents didn't, so we're gonna go in another direction and land a few miles away. If you can start to change where they nest, where they feed, where they rest, then future generations, the likelihood is they'll stay away as well. What we're doing here with the Edmonton International Airport is a three-month trial project. It's the first time a rover has flown in a commercial airport, and this is the first time that commercially an airport has allowed UAV and drone operations on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe on the way back we'll see if those crows decided to yeah. come back. Okay. Perfect. Airports are very hesitant because there's risk between manned aviation and unmanned aviation. A lot of regulators just go, no, no drones because of the risk. The difference here is that we're professional operators. We've gone through a series of scrutinized inspections, reviews, and rules and regulations. Because the robot is robotic, because it's controlled and has a whole bunch of redundancy built in, we decrease that risk of the tool becoming a hazard itself. And we are showing that there is a way to fly at airports. I hate to say it, but it's almost a fact of life that you are probably going to hit birds at some time in your career. It's just a matter of how you can mitigate that. That's the most important part. And whether that is through the roll bird or whatever other procedures that the airport does, it's extremely important.